All right, just want to tell you guys before we get started on this that my use of impacts is not deer clutches method. Uh, that's my method. Uh, number two, my method on the alignment to be seen later in the video is slightly different than theirs. I'd probably suggest their method, but I'm lazy and I'm on a lift. So I'm going to show you how I do it and then I'll describe it to you. All right, I know it's a little close up and a lot of times I like to use two cameras on something and I'm also going to apologize for my dirty ranger. This ain't just a shop queen, this is my actual unit. Don't do nothing rain around here lately and I just could not get an opportunity to clean it for this video, so I'm not. So anywho, what this is about is how to install the Dura Clutch system. Dura Clutch has changed their secondary up for the 16 and newer models that had the square puck style clutch and they did it mostly because that clutch has a low speed uh, noise. If, if anybody follows razors or anything else knows that these things, especially those vehicles, have a low speed sound radiating from the secondary. We're not going to get into all that, but that's kind of the reason. So there's a new secondary out by them. And here it is. It basically looks like the old style from a, say, a, oh, a 900 or something a few years back with its own center shaft. So it's been redesigned to fit over your shaft. It's a little heavier duty design and it's going to be quiet. And I actually like telling you it comes with Hunter Works rollers already installed. I would, I guess we'll call this the official uh, secondary roller provider for dirt clutch. But nonetheless, it comes with our rollers. And let's talk about how to put it on because there's a little special little trick here is why we're doing this. All right, so I'm going to try to stay out of the way and, and get this done for you all at the same time. I usually start with the primary clutch. I'm an impact guy. That's a 21 millimeter bolt. You set that to the side because you won't be using it. Take your clutch puller. Get it started by hand. Like this is a 19 millimeter. Great, mine don't want to come off. That's a little trick. When you got one that don't want to come off, you hit directly on this. It's a kind of a hydro or a whatever. And take it back out. And then take your primary off. All right, set it to the side. You can take your belt off if you want to at this point. That exhaust duct kind of gets in the way. You're not reusing it. Then we're going to take a 15 millimeter and take off secondary. Okay. And you're not going to reuse that bolt either. Slide this off. All right, now you see the, this one moves, you see the difference here. This one's got a center shaft, this one runs on your transmission shaft. Now here's where the difference comes in. They provide you with these four of these little shims, okay? So the idea is, is that some of these vehicles can have little issues to where they have an alignment problem. And, and so to help with that, without going into great detail with pulling clutch housings off and so forth uh, and getting an alignment tool or whatever, they provided these little uh, shims. And so the instructions tell you to grab two of them and slide them on your transmission shaft. And, and I know it's dark and this ain't the greatest, but they slide right here and they stop where the spline stop. Inside this clutch is a, is a stop as well. So the clutch slides in and they come to that and that's uh -oh, where they stop at. 
that made any sense. Alright, now then, comes with a new bolt and a new washer. I think they call this a Beeville washer, but it's, it's uh, concave, convex, whatever. And you want to put the, the rounded part out. Slide it on your bolt. Put it in there. And this one's going to be 17 millimeter. Now this should be torqued 45 foot pounds. 16 years, I use the impact. That's about 45. <laughs> then you take their belt only. This is a custom dimension. Fix it where you can read the writing on it. There we go, where I can read the writing. Just FYI, belts are only directional after you use them, not before. There's a lot of misinformation about that. Well, they got arrows, they got whatever. Well, that's just to help to give you a reference, but technically it doesn't matter only the first time. So what I did is I took this belt tool and I hooked it in here in a corner and squeezed it or pushed it and then pulled the belt down into the secondary. I picked up my deer clutch and hook, I call it hooking the belt. Put it on the crankshaft. Grab their bolt. Has a step washer on it, must be in place. And tighten it up. Get a finger started. It includes a tool for that bolt. And get it tightened back up. Once once again, this is 96 foot pounds. That's what I use. Okay. Now, for all intensive purposes, our deer clutch is on. Okay. I don't. We won't go through the entire process because it would just be too lengthy. It'd bore you to death in these already boring videos. Okay. So. On the install portion, I put two of the shims on, on mine, just as instructions said. But I ended up, after checking it, taking both of those back out. So I almost have it right. So this vehicle, it's kind of semi-abused, may have a true alignment problem that really needs deeper attention that has to do with engine and transmission mounts. But it's so minor that I'm going to run it. So the process is that you, you put your two and they want you to crank it up, rib it up, shut it off, and, and the place you have to grab, and you're just hardly going to be able to see in the video, and I apologize because it's so dark in here, but the movable sheave where it, right in here, and you're going to try to push. I'm on. All right, I felt it move. and 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 it moved that way, then you'd crank it up, rivet it up, shut it off. I also found that if I just turned myself backwards a few times, it would recenter itself, and then you try to pull on it and see if you get any movement back this way. That's where mine had a problem. It would move that way, but it couldn't center itself this way very well. And when I ribbed it up, I had a tea tiny amount coming back to me. So that's what we're doing is grabbing this, and I just move mine over, this fixed or movable sheave here, and so we know we have movement that way, and then pull it back. All right, so mine has very little. Like I said, mine actually could use some motor to transmission mount manipulation. But I'm not going that deep. Uh, but now, don't let this deter you from purchasing it. That has nothing to do with the Dura Clutch. This has all to do with my vehicle. Most people, per Dura Clutch, is going to be able to use two washers and not have any trouble at all. So, that's basically how to install the new style Dura Clutch. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, holler at us on all our new videos. I say it's really tough to get on the phone these days. We just have so many customers calling in we can't get to everybody so shoot me an email 
Oh, that's a great way to get me, Todd, at HunterWorks.com. Thanks.